Welcome to another healing conversation brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and today we are in the quantum zone in our new way of living and raising our vibration. This is the ascension process. This is the shift in consciousness. My next guest is a way shower and an ascension guide and a gatekeeper who is in service to the light and this shift in consciousness on Gaia. Sandra Walter is an interdimensional liaison and she assists humans through writings focused on the shift and a comprehensive ascension course. Sandra is in Mount Shasta, California, and she's got some incredible information to share with us today. Sandra, thank you so much for being here on Healing Conversations. Oh, blessings, Lauren. It's beautiful to connect with you. So here we are. Ascension. Ascension is a frequency. Can you share more about how you personally awoke in this moment to do this work that you're doing? Sure. Uh, Briefly, I had many experiences growing up, as many of us do, uh, interaction with star families or or guides, and it came and went for years, all the way through my, my teens and into my 20s, and I didn't really understand what that was. I thought that my guides were just a little closer than everyone else's. And then I had a a very strong experience, literally on January 1st, 1999. I woke up and I was suddenly clairaudient and claircognizant, just instantly. All this information and messages pouring in to my consciousness, and they were all talking about a period of time that was in the near future where creativity and the true humanity was going to be emerging. And they kept talking about all these shifts in consciousness. And even at that point in 1999, I was not aware of the 2012 timeline and what was what was going to occur. So this accelerated my awakening in a very fast way. And every day I was receiving a new message and writing it down, sharing it with friends. And this continued for three years, and then 9-11 happened, and everything fell into place, shattered and fell into place at the same time. I left everything, my my job, my home, moved to to the ocean and anchored in and said, okay, what, what is this? What is going on? And that accelerated my awakening process. And all these all the pieces of the past started tying together, and then it was revealed to me that I was to be an ascension guide, that I was going to serve as an interdimensional liaison, bridging the worlds during the shift in consciousness. And it, it wasn't until I was in Santa Barbara, and I had uh, written this book called The Creator State that talked about the creative state of humanity. It was the state of consciousness where you are pure creator beingness. And it was done through artists in the, in the novel. But I, I actually went to a gathering of Barbara Marks Hubbard in, in Santa Barbara and told her what I was writing about. I'm like, it's, it's tied into the zero-point field, and it's about the creator consciousness. And she's like, you have to publish this. So she was really the, the first person who said, go, girl. Oh. <laughs> so I, I put the book out, and I kept writing, kept writing. And then my journey just opened wide up. When I, um, Chicago is, has been kind of an activator for me. I've lived there twice, and I have responsibility there um, for showing up at the right time in the right place. And I went back to Chicago, and then everything about the, the ascension guidance and the, the galactic connection started to, uh, started to come in very clear. And then I exclusively dedicated everything in my life to that service. And you do reach a point with, with any way showership where nothing matters but service and when you get into that zone it's a it's a complete no-brainer you move completely into the heart and then everything starts flowing your connection with the higher self and your guides your star family the masters everything starts falling into place when you kind of let go of trying to steer your own journey too much and then the the gatekeeper revelation came just 
in, in 2012 when I showed up here in Mount Shasta. And again, completely guided to come here, didn't really understand why. And then the my gatekeeper initiation was a bit over the top. It's, you know, it does look like giant pearly gates, gold for me, but giant gateways opening up, every master, all the angelics, you know, everybody's there. It's brighter than bright, and they're all saying, you know, you're an ascension guide, you're a gatekeeper, <laughs> this is the, you know, this is what's unfolding and everything, thank you for accepting this role. And I was completely overwhelmed, just bawling my eyes out, and it's because there's there's such an intense vibration of love at that level, but then I was beginning to, to be trained, how do you open gateway, how, what does this mean, I was sent on a journey all through last year through the crystalline corridor connecting Shasta all the way down to Stona and over to Chaco Canyon and the Grand Canyon, just really learning more and more about who I am, what my what my skill level is, and consistently receiving these these downloads of pure divine love and light that work at a cellular level to open up the memory of who I truly am, what I'm truly doing here, so that I can resonate at a high enough vibration to be a, a true interdimensional liaison where I can have very uh, cognizant, comprehensive uh, conversations and interactions uh, with the beings that are assisting us right now. now some gatekeepers are called, and, and just to explain what a gate is, um, Thank you. I was going to ask. <laughs> we we open and maintain gates, which are they're like uh, like high frequency portals, and they link this dimension with the higher dimensions during the shift in consciousness. Ah. They are portals that that flow this divine light, and we always have. There's activations that come through the sun. There's an activation coming up in June that we're, we're our entire galaxy is being pushed into a different area of the universe, but our mm. solar system is going into a very kind of hypercharged area of the photon belt. So it becomes very significant, and gatekeepers open these channels of, of light. They look like giant gold pillars, or they might be kind of spinny or too porous looking, and they, they connect this higher dimensional energy and pull it into this reality because technically the third and fourth dimension is, uh, is, is dissolving, you know, going away completely. It's a collective consciousness that continues to create that every day and it eventually burns itself out because it's, um, it's like, you know, building a reality but it's got nothing to stand on anymore now that Gaia has moved on to that fifth, sixth dimensional expression. So, and that shows just how strong our creator incarnate skills are. I mean, human is a very divine expression. That's pure source in form. And as we remember that, uh, we can see the example of it all around us. You know, we wake up and there's still a chair in the room and we're still agreeing that, you know, this is a cell phone, that is a computer, that is a tree. You know, we're still running these collective agreements for how things were. And as we awaken, we start creating how things truly are or what we truly desire or creating in alignment with pure source consciousness, which is that fifth, sixth dimensional vibration that we've all been feeling coming in. It's doing its work at a cellular level. It's an awakening, it's awakening DNA that has been dormant for a while. We're receiving new strands of DNA from the cosmos itself. All of these things are going on, and gatekeepers are opening these channels for more of that energy, more of that activation to flow into the planet. We send it into the grid systems. We have all of our grid systems are fully functional, and they are glowing. Gaia is starting to glow. You know, if you have vision, you can see the, the vibrancy starting to return, and that is the truth. You know, this is the lifting of the veils, is, is slowly peeling back layer by layer of what is the truth. We start to see the vibrancy, we start to see the divine love, we start to see the influence of the light on this planet. 
and gatekeepers themselves hold codes and sacred templates which uh, enable ascension frequencies to pass through into this plane of existence. We captured them on a 12-12-12, and now they're um, we're conduits for this new light. They're typically serving a unique role for a passage during the shift, so not all gatekeepers are going to be ascension guides or, or this, that, or the other thing. Um, it's, uh, you might be assigned to an area of the planet, but we, we hold these gates to heaven open bridging the worlds and merging heaven and earth just as planned just as predicted holding the gates to heaven open beautiful beautiful work because i i get to experience that higher uh expression of gaia i get to experience heaven what people have called heaven that fifth six dimensional plane of consciousness where all the the master retreats and the crystalline cities, all of that, you know, you get to see that a lot when you're a gatekeeper because that is the level that we're arising to. And and when we have what I call gateways are these cosmic triggers. They're like waves of energy that are coming to the planet. We're about to have one um, at, at the end of May and then a big one in June and, and continuing. There's another one in July, another, you know, they... The, for people who are experiencing the intensity of the energy, a lot of people just have to sleep or their uh-huh. consciousness is getting expanded. They're feeling a little um, berserk or triggered emotionally. Yeah. It's, uh, this, this is not slowing down, <laughs> not, not, not to, uh, you know, not to be a bringer of bad news or anything like that. It's not going to calm down anytime soon. We are l- literally snowballing into this this new shift, this new state of consciousness. So it's all going to continue to build and build and build. But these gateways, these markers that are cosmic triggers, either alignments of planets and stars or alignments with energies and area of space or a, a, a plain old galactic collective sending energy through the sun because we are ready for it. Mm. Um, these gateways are opportunities to expand your consciousness. I mean, technically, the entire shift yeah, is a gateway. The, the entire era of the shift is a gateway. But we have these, since we still experience time, space, and density, we get to explore cosmic markers, these waves of new light, and this new territory of the photon belt. And anyone welcoming the new light into their life stream has the opportunity to level up with each gateway. And that includes, you know, increased sensitivity, your, your, your pineal, your psychic skills coming online, the ability to, uh, to have personal revelations about who you truly are. And that's very personal. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a, an opportunity coming up in June where this, this journey is going to get very personal. We've had a lot of collective uh, agreement uh, of uh, ascension symptoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to call them side effects. You know, symptoms sounds like a, like a disease. <laughs> but as we, as we experience these further and further expansions of our consciousness, it becomes very personal. We're, we are getting shown what that true self-empowerment is, how unique our expression is, and even though we're moving into unity consciousness, it's not just one big blob of we're all the same. It gets very creative. And it's very, and I, I try to focus on this on, in the Ascension course as well, is using creativity as a bridge between the worlds. Because as you move into this more creator state, this creator state of beingness, that consciousness requires conscious interaction from moment to to moment, not of the mind, but of the heart, the true creativity shining through your own beingness. So we do have an opportunity not just to clear and go through the lessons and the mission, the divine template activation, that's DNA and the nervous system rewrites, or amplification of the crystalline structures within you, that's an increased light quotient in the body. It's etheric at first and then it moves into the physical all of our energy fields getting getting triggered and anchored into a new state of beingness and then going completely light body eventually. 
uh, we do have some some gateways coming up next year where there'll be an opportunity for those who have chosen to consciously participate in their ascension, understand completely what it's about, what they want to experience, what their goal is. It, it's, it has never been about waiting or watching mm. under, or depending upon outside information. Very helpful to have guidance. Of course, we're all in this together. But we don't want to be um, kind of guilty of ascension via, via inception. You know, the idea of ascension sounds good, and I'm just going to watch. But mm. that's not what ascension is about. Our conscious participation in the, the examination of self-love the examination of our own creation, taking full responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. And a huge amount of it is forgive and forget. You know, how do we completely treat all of what has occurred with divine neutrality? And that's something I would would love to um, just guide people through a a really simple exercise uh, that I share in the course, if I may. That would be wonderful. Again, I just want to point out what you said there, Sandra, because I know this shift. It was interesting that 9-11 was your awakening. I know that was pivotal on our planet. In fact, I get very emotional just um, feeling that time yeah. within me. Um, it was a great shift. And so um, that was your awakening. Then people started looking at 2012. That opened, that was, let's call it a gateway for 2012. What happened with 2012 is you had mentioned that people will watch it and sit, sit back and watch the shift. What we've learned here in 2014 now, we are responsible for the shift. And you say it is there for those who have chosen to make that shift, chosen ascension. So thank you as we go into this experiential process with divine neutrality. Yes, and this is, I, in, in the course I just, I explain that dimensional levels are like Russian dolls. You know, a lot of people think, oh, my higher self is out there, up there, mm-hmm. up there. Um, and that's just because we're in a body on a planet that we think up there, out there. You know, we look out in space and go, that's where everything else is. Yeah. But our, our dimensional levels are like Russian dolls. They nest inside of each other. The densest being at the core, that's us. This is the lowest we can go. <laughs> mm-hmm. so the densest being at the core, and then the dimensional, dimensional levels of your expressions surround you as layers going outward. So when... You, you want to expand your consciousness. We're not just going up. You know, that used to be the, the way to do it. Oh, I'm going to go up in the astral and take a look around. I'm going to spin my Merkaba and go, go for a ride and take a look at what's in the astral. Now that we're in the middle of astral collapse, that fourth dimensional plane getting thinner and thinner and thinner and all the, the magnetosphere completely disappearing, it's, as it gets thinner and thinner, we're able to kind of poke right through that and take a look at the, the next level beyond, you know, 4D is just dream state. The fifth dimensional level is where that higher self starts to exist, your other expressions. So we want to expand our consciousness out and remember that there is, there's nothing wrong with this, this dense expression because all of those expressions are connected through the heart center. And the heart center, which is right in the, in the middle of your chest, is uh, a golden diamond crystalline expression of pure source light. As a divine human, it, do, it, is, it does contain gold, the, the ray of gold. That's just the Christic consciousness. But in that pinpoint of light, which begins to expand as we awaken, that is where everything is connected. So when you want to connect with the higher realms, we expand our consciousness out. So we're kind of pushing away the shell of that densest Russian doll and going into the next level. And for some people, you can you can expand all the way out to source level, and I do teach that in the course. But for now, just for the immediate experience, this is something you can use for your personal journey, healing the planet and healing the collective. Now just tap in to that heart center. Feel it. 
put your hand on your chest. Breathe into it. Take a nice inhale, creator breath. And exhale. Now let's just expand instantly and effortlessly into light body. Just take the walls away. Poof. Like a fine golden crystalline diamond mist. If you like, you can put your hands up and face them out toward the walls and just push a little bit. Light body. Poof. No more density. No more duality. Instantly, effortlessly, fine light substance. Now let us exercise our creator beingness as source incarnate, as the fractal of source that you are. Let us pull all that is into our heart center. Use your hands and just pull all that is, all of creation, into your heart center. Slowly moving all of that energy, everything that has ever been created, all that is, everything that's occurred on the planet, everything that's occurred in your personal journey, put all into your heart. No fear. You are source incarnate. Let all of the density go and pull all that is into your heart. Now place your hands on your heart center and hold it. Hold it like the divine creation that it is. Breathe in all that is around us all that has been, what is, and all the knowledge that comes with it, all the emotion that comes with it, and just feel it. Learn from it. Integrate it. Pull everything into that golden, crystalline, diamond heart center, the pure spark of source in the center of your beingness. And let's just breathe here for a moment taking it all in, the silence, the stillness, the contemplation, all of it, feeling it. Feel all that was as the experience through source's perception, just information, no attachment, no judgment, taking all of creation into your heart, and we just hold it there all that you have been, all of your journeys here, all of creation, everything that has occurred on this planet, take every particle of Gaia into your heart, the entire experience of galaxy, universe, humanity, kingdoms, elementals, personal journey, all of it into your heart center, holding it here. And now we perform the divine act of pure forgiveness. Forgive all of it. Personal, planetary, galactic history. Forgive and dissolve all of it in the light of divine neutrality. Absolutely no judgment. Absolutely no attachment. Pure forgiveness. You as source dissolving all that was and all memory of it. In this now moment, forgive and dissolve all of it completely. All attachments to what was, what is, or thoughts of our future outcomes. And hold this here. Dissolving it. Bringing in your own true golden crystalline light. Dissolving it. Not out of judgment, but because it was. Feel it. Forgive it. Love it. Be at peace with all of it. Purify it. And as we breathe in this divine love, the golden rays, let us take a pure creator breath, inhaling, and then before we exhale, the pure intention for a brand new crystalline experience. Golden crystalline diamond light. Effortlessly create that new reality as we exhale. All of the past dissolved. Pure creation. 
exhale this divine command in complete divine neutrality through all of creation. I am divine love. I am divine light. I am divine will. I am divine humanity, Gaia, divine kingdoms and elementals expressing in the freedom of divine pure light. Exhale this puritized beingness out into your own energy fields, your own life stream, all expressions of you, all of humanity, Gaia, galaxy, universe, multiverse, and pure source consciousness. Take a breath and feel the divine truth of what source has commanded on the highest of level. And now you, as an awakened source incarnate, carry forth that order the pure photonic order of divine light, divine love, and divine will. In this state of expanded consciousness of divine love, all of the past has been dissolved. All of our future intentions are what they are. In this now moment, this is where all of your creator skills are embodied in this purity, in the ability to take all that is into your heart center, dissolve it in divine neutrality, and effortlessly create divine love, create pure alignment with source. And we carry that in our energy fields. Take a deep breath. Exhale as creator. Thank you. This is something that we can do anytime we need personal healing. Situation occurs. We, we know as creator incarnate that we can create things over and over and over again. And our experience and density has been very repetitive, very cyclical. We continue to create situations to learn lessons. This is the time to bring things into our beingness and in our own power as source, complete neutrality, complete forgiveness, so that we are no longer affected by the dense external and connect with that true creator beingness. This creates bridges between you and the higher beings that are already in that state. There is no judgment on anything which is occurring or has occurred. All of that, gone, poof. It is merely the illusion, the maya. And as that dissolves, we want to connect with that pure consciousness so that we learn and retrain our subconscious to each moment breathe and exhale and create exactly what it is we desire. And that shows us where our intentions are. That shows us how to forgive everything that has occurred on the planet. That shows us how we engage with the ascension process. Expansion and activation is wonderful at a cellular level. You can be buzzing from head to toe every day. But until you get in that state of what true creator consciousness is, that true unity consciousness, I and, and my Father, my Creator, my Higher Self, Mother, Father, God, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. Pure Source Consciousness and me are one. And that is responsibility, responsible creation at that point. What do I want to create? I want to create peace. I'm going to take everything, all that Gaia is and all of humanity, into my heart and forgive it and dissolve it and say, okay, now we're doing something new. And exhale pure divine beingness, carrying. And it's going to be important in, in the coming months for every way shower and or person in service to the light 
to hold that calm, centered, peaceful, loving, forgiving light that we truly are, so that everything that is going around in the external, a lot of triggers occur when when the frequency of the planet takes a jump, Uh, when the energies get intense, a lot of people get triggered. Step away from it. That has nothing to do with your journey any longer when you're choosing to be pure source light incarnate. And try not to get concerned about what was or what will be. Just be in this now moment of what is. What do I want to create right now? Peace, harmony, balance, pure light, pure love, ascension. And take as many particles of your beingness as you can with you. Don't leave any stone unturned during this journey, because eventually the light, um, you know, beloved brother Sai Baba said, you know, you put, uh, it's like putting a brighter light in, the, in a closet. There's dust there. You didn't even know, you know, and as the, the light bulb gets more and more intense, things, things come up. Deal with it. You can't just sweep it under the rug. All is turning to light. But that also means forgiving all of the stuff that you are not. And that's on a planetary level as well. That's what a lot of gatekeepers are involved in, is a a dissolvement, balancing of magnetics, of course, but a dissolvement of all of these denser layers of collective thought form. And it gets much easier when awakened people participate and hold that frequency within your own beingness. And that is, uh, a lot of people are, are... searching for how do I connect with my guides, how do I connect with my higher self. That is the resonation of the higher self, is that state of divine love, that divine neutrality. And that that can be very frustrating for people along the journey. How come the masters talk to you and they don't talk to me? It's just a matter of intention and a resonating with the grace and the honoring of pure service. And even even if you know if there's anyone listening, I just uh, that does not know where their journey is going, wh- what their mission is. Try not to grasp at it. Try not to cling to an idea of of what you think you are. My mission itself, as clear as I've been, I mean, my my awakening um, to clear audience, clear cognizant information came in 1999, and yet. All of the layers of and steps in this mission continue to change. You know, I serve in whatever is appropriate for what is happening in that now moment. So I'm probably not going to be uh, an ascension guide forever. You know, this is the the interdimensional liaison aspect of my service is taking on a whole other level over the summer. The gatekeeping is changing. You know, all mm-hmm. of this, even ascension guidance, starts to change. Mm-hmm. There are foundational things, but even the the way in which I I choose to express, where the information is is constantly unfolding, because of this divine shift in consciousness. What a shift you helped us with in that process, that helped us experience forgiving everything that occurred on the planet. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful, Sandra. I had tears streaming down my face as we took in that earth because I know a lot of listeners are right there with me. I'm in Colorado, and fracking is in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. But this process that you led us into is the actual work that we must do because it is forgiving and dissolving all of it that no judgment that no attachment and so that's where my tears came from and i know there's others listening that felt the same thing but to be able to get into that state of true creator consciousness as you call it that that's really our responsibility and so just this work that we did right here in this call helped shift so much because we can get frustrated when we see 
fracking pads that were not there before. But this is the well, work. The, this is it. It's a, a combination of things because this is, this, and this is something you can use any time. Any time you're, you're feeling you're getting too lost in the density, too lost in the duality, the judgment, mm-hmm. or, or fear and anger come up, oh, you know, just put your hands up, spread your arms wide, and just take everything into your heart center and hold it there and breathe and dissolve it and forgive it. Because un- until you're operating from a state of that neutrality, now neutrality isn't, it, it isn't uh, giving up. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not, not fighting for, for what you believe in. It's, it has nothing to do with that. But you are much more effective when you yourself are centered in your own consciousness. So then you can, and, and this is something that a lot of the, the galactic teams, um, and I'm part of the Pleiadian Syrian Alliance. And this is something that, that the grounded folks are, are getting um, amplified with right now, is the state of divine neutrality, so that when we go into these situations, some of them etheric, some of them in the physical, sitting across the table from some of these world leaders or people who, have, um, who are in charge of, of systems that are not in the highest interests of the planet or humanity. And it's just that simple. You know, triality is operating from, look, either you're in the highest interest of all concerned, or you're not in the highest interest of all concerned, or it's none of my business. You know, there's a whole zone for, I don't need to participate in that decision at all. Mm-hmm. In, in duality, we're constantly being pushed before, what do you think, what do you think, yes or no? When we get into this divine neutrality, we're able to take a look at things and go, that is not in the highest interest of this planet or humanity. So from this point of neutrality, dear brother, what are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. That way there is no blame on that person for their choices. They are not instantly defensive when you're approaching, you know, if you approach someone with anger, they're just going to throw it back at you, especially now that we're in zero point. Mm. The boomerang effect is very quick. So when you're appro- approaching someone with divine love and divine neutrality, you can walk hand in hand, heart to heart, with someone who is making decisions at that level that are not in the highest interest and go, what are we going to do? All of this is dissolving, and this is not good. How, you know, this is your choice. Either you you step into integrity or you're out of here. Um, you know, that those, those are your choices, but we're here to help. You know, and it is up to all of us as divine humans not to uh, not to fall into okay, I'm forgiving everything that I am, and just hold it in your own house. But going out into your community, and when things arise that look like they're not in the highest interest of all concerned, or a group of people want to get together and and protest something, there should at least be one person anchoring that frequency of okay, everybody. If we you know we can't solve problems with the same energy, so we can't go in there all fast and furious, who, who are the people that we need to talk to, and then going in in that neutral state, which is what a lot of us are doing in the etheric realms, is um, you know going into Washington, having these meetings with masters and, and incarnates, and saying, they know the jig is up, here's how we, here's how we change it. Yes. It's going to take conscious participation from everyone to approach individuals that are in uh, illusionary roles of power and say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're not going to hang you out to dry, but this is coming down. You know, any of your politicians or representatives going and approaching them with a completely different energy because they are going to be presentational in mm-hmm. their style. Mm-hmm. You know, politics leaves the door wide open for a lot of distortion. So you're going into something that's already afraid. Mm-hmm. Of, of what you're going to think and what you're going to say. And when you're going in there, you need to approach them with the human-to-human approach of brother, sister. What are we going to do? We can change this very quickly, but we, we need you to help. You know, we need your participation. And it goes all, all the way up the ladder with those decision-making. But it does take action. I don't want anyone to feel like ascension is just me and my process. 
and I'm over here in a cave, <laughs> mm-hmm. and here I am enlightened, and, you know, the rest of the world can burn. You know, that is not what it's about. A unity consciousness is raising the vibration of everyone. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are a few who have the opportunity to level up to a much higher level, but that's pure physics. The higher vibration always raises the lower. So the higher folks can level up as far as possible, highly encourage that, and it raises everybody up. But everyone at every different level of awakening and ascension, and wherever you are in your process, it does take participation, and you do want to spread it around. Be open with everyone around you as to what you're experiencing, and you'll be shocked at how many people are awake but but don't want to talk about it. <laughs> that, that's another thing that we've been facing for a while. And now is the time to speak your truth. You know, mm-hmm. that is your integrity. That is being genuine. That is spirituality. Spirituality is not something you do on Saturdays or Sundays or while you're meditating. Spirituality is a way of being, eating consciously. Food expressed as as spirituality, your actions, your words, your thoughts, deeds, everything about you is an expression of your spirit and treating it that way. The entire planet, the spiritual being, all of the people you interact with are spiritual beings. This is a divine reunion of all of us. And it's absolutely okay if you feel that you just can't express yourself yet, but understand that in order to resonate at a frequency of authenticity and a genuine expression, a higher level of consciousness, you're going to have to open up. You know, this is um, busting all the fears, everything that, and everything that comes with busting the fears. So this simple exercise of holding your own heart center, feeling your own spark of source and breathing into it, Knowing, telling yourself, convince your subconscious to go another direction. All is well. All is well. All We are surrounded by love. There is nothing else here but love. And anything else is the illusion. It's just a dimmer form of light. And as we raise our vibration, everywhere we walk, flowers bloom. Everywhere we speak, minds and hearts are open to the truth. Everywhere we shine, just by holding that light in being, we are co-creating the shift in consciousness and accelerating the ascension of ourselves and everyone around us. And that is scientifically proven for those who need the science. You were talking about the vibration that those can level up to a new vibration. And when they do, it raises everyone else up. And so we need to spread that around and release with this new energy coming in in June and then July. You said it was going to get very personal. My goodness, this year already feels like it's personal. (laughs) I mean, the, the Ascension journey itself, what is personal revelations, because it, we seem to have reached a point where all of our, you know, all of our teachings and all the efforts of the way showers and all the beautiful guides that we have, uh, at, at some point, all that information is, is integrated into the collective consciousness, anchored mm-hmm. through so many people awakening, mm-hmm. and then there are these beautiful personal revelations that come about your personal journey. And what you're truly here, it's like a level of freedom. Okay, now that you've awakened to this level, what would you like to experience? What is available? And this is where where the consciousness gets really out of the box and starts. Um, I'm, I personally am fascinated by my experiences with first contact. This is yes. something that has only happened, like, in the third eye. My, com- my communication, uh, my interaction with Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians has all been third eye communication up until just a few months ago. Okay, now let's... I do wanna... the physical. Okay, that's really fascinating. 
I did want to ask you, Sandra, you mentioned your galactic team and that you're part of the Pleiadian and Syrian Alliance, but you just had first contact physically? In the physical, and this is this is something that uh, it doesn't, it doesn't look the way that we thought it would, and it will get more intense as we go along. But these first contact experiences where the where beings, you know, my brothers and sisters, are starting to show up in the physical, they're not obviously not as, as dense as we are, and you do have to attune your perception to that vibration. It's a frequency. They're okay. standing around, you know. It, it, they're here. Uh, they've, wow. Uh, They've always been here, but the veils have lifted enough, and we're starting to, we're, we're getting to that point on the ascension timeline where contact is going to be important uh -huh. certain way showers because there's going to be information shared that will assist us in a much stronger way yeah. as we go through this kind of tumultuous period over the next year tumultuous period over the next year as this influx of light comes in. Our responsibility then is to take a look at every fear. You know, even myself, I've been feeling in making changes that I know I need to make changes and that change sometime needs to be handled as, you know, taking a leap of faith and trusting. Absolutely. And every time we leap, there's a net. Every time. I mean, ascension is referred to as... There's a net. <laughs> the, the ascension is the invisible staircase. It's not until you put your foot out to step on the next step that it appears. You know, it is a complete act of faith. Oh, yes. And this is something that we're constantly climbing, these levels that we thought existed, felt existed, and then, you know, you jump and it's there. The next level is there. Mm. And, so, and when I when I say tumultuous, there is I I am not into the scary Mary stuff at all. Right. No doom, nothing like that. Uh -huh. Earth changes get distracting. The, and people have certain uh, roles to play mm -hmm. during the shift. So there's absolutely no judgment on who's coming, who's going. Okay. Understand that a lot of people are are dropping off the planet. You know, a lot of people are dying right now, and that continues to happen. But it has nothing. It, it, it's it's not a doom scenario. There's no judgment on what that person's role was in your family, in your soul group, on the planet at all. It doesn't mean they were good, bad, anything. It's it is what it is. But as we go through this um, this more difficult time, challenging time, the folks that have prepared for it, uh -huh. you're going to float right through it. It's going to be radiant yes. revelation. A little bizarre because people are having a completely different experience than you are, yeah. but it is what it is. You yeah. know, where we understand why we've been working so hard, why we did all the, all the heavy lifting. It's like, here's our payoff, mm. and just go with it. I highly encourage anyone who's getting the afternoon activations right now, which is uncanny. Between afternoon activations? Oh my goodness! Between one and three o'clock in the afternoon, and this is—I could friend oh. New Zealand, New Zealand, Russia, Hawaii, some folks in the U.S. and and over in Europe. Everyone's like, "Oh my gosh!" One to three o'clock in the afternoon, not every day, but on certain days, powerful activation. You have to lay down. Like it's it's incredible, but uh, and blessings to ev anyone who's experiencing that. But we we just have these these groups of of people experiencing different levels of initiations, different levels of activations. And it does that's what I mean by it becomes very personal, is we've had the opportunity in uh, in many, uh, like, ascension symptoms groups and stuff to share, oh, yes, today feels weird, today, feel, you know, I'm tingling today, whatever. It becomes very personal now. And the revelations go far beyond symptoms or seeing beings in your room. It becomes, uh, now we're having more of a telepathic communion with our higher levels, mm. and that to me is is a bit of a challenge because it cannot be translated into words. You know, a lot of it is it's such a high feeling, it's such a high amount of love that it, it just it belittles all of it to even try to put it into words. And there's information that comes through even when I was I, I asked to take a look at June. What does it look like? And it's just this giant gold white light on a timeline lighting up and all these people and 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 Gaia herself turning gold 
that doesn't mean it's going to happen for everyone on the planet. That means in, in my journey, I'm going to experience something that's a little off the chart. But it's my preparation and willingness to walk into that unknown. I'm like, okay, whatever, whatever it takes. Because I have no fear of, of uh, I have anchored fully my, my discernment and my neutrality and have trained myself to know what I pay attention to and what I don't. Even when the, the beings um, appear now, I've, I've asked, I'm like, what is all the racing energy and flashing and orbs and everything mm. in between us? There's yeah. like a field of all, it looks like a meteor shower sometimes, yeah. or orbs and between me and my higher self, me and my, the beings. I'm like, what is, what is all that? What's going on there? They're like, that, those are the last layers of the astral. Ooh. It's like a high l- level of the astral. That's still the veil, but it's like you're looking through that. We're communicating through that. So I'm continuing to uh, attune my perception, very important, attuning my perception to fifth dimension and higher, just ignoring all, all the, the dream state, the, the goofiness of the fourth dimensional plane altogether, and focusing on the beings that are resonating in full love so that my my own veils uh, of, of still seeing that astral plane that we've interacted with for so long dissolve. Oh. There's a further amplification of lifting those veils. Mm-hmm. Or, and for those of us who have skills, I, I feel it's going to be brilliant because then it'll be similar to the visions that we've had of uh, going through the gates or experiencing crystalline cities, but it'll be so much clearer and so much more um, so much stronger you had mentioned a couple of things that I'd like to ask you about the crystalline cities let's talk a little bit about Mount Shasta where you are because you said it was a crystalline corridor and it links to Chaco Canyon Grand Canyon Chaco Canyon by the way is I just read um, Bureau of Land Management wants to frack there. They just gave the mineral rights. So just an awareness of that. It's just interesting that it does affect that crystalline corridor. But as we raise our frequency, New Earth is not a place. It's a frequency. If it's the nested dolls, dimensions are nested dolls, like you said, then... That's really what we're doing here is we are seeing it in that frequency. Can you share more about crystalline cities? That's a frequency. Sure. Yeah, and the crystalline cities, you know, this is um, a lot of our history books, our religious texts have referred to it as heaven. It's, it's a, a, a layer of consciousness, a realm of consciousness, a bandwidth of consciousness around the planet where all of these these beautiful... Uh, either ascended beings, some star family, angelic realms, have have created this realm where, uh, and they do look like, um, oh, I, I don't like to use the term cities and people think high rises and stuff. It's like plazas and buildings and mansions. I mean, it's, it's elaborate beyond belief. And especially over uh, Mount Shasta, the crystalline city there, is because it is a retreat of the masters, because it is... Um, a, a dwelling place for Archangel Gabriel, because we do have uh, a, a very interdimensional um, spaceport, if you will, uh, here at Mount Shasta, and because it is a node, if not the becoming the node for incoming divine love energy, and that's related to um, work that the Arcturians, the Venusians, our, our beloved over on Venus. Um, and Pleiadian Syrian alliances are working with an um, but but Mount Shasta is becoming this this main focus of divine love, and and that has to do a lot with just the structure of of Mount Shasta itself. You know, it's an extinct volcano. There's a lot of tubes. It's a mineral content. It's it's been used for for eons as a, as an energy point, but now it has the opportunity to turn into this sacred uh, vortex of, of divine love, and it's going to get very powerful. There's actually been times when when my 
higher self has said, step away from the vortex. You know, <laughs> like it's it's we're just going to be working on some things. If you just just scoot, scoot away from town a little bit, or you know, that's been happening a lot lately. Whereas the last the last couple of years, it's been beyond the mountain, beyond the mountain, beyond the mountain, um, so, which is uh, unusual. But in these these journeys where I was taken to the crystalline cities as a as a gatekeeper opening gateways, and the next thing you know, I'm being escorted into the crystalline city that's over Shasta, and the, the, the beloved beings that escorted me in there dissolved and let me roam. So I was, and I was running in my consciousness. I'm moving as quickly as I can because I don't know how long I have access, <laughs> and I'm running as quickly as I can taking everything in. Whose house is this? What does that look like? You know, and it's all rose quartz, gold, you know, diamond, lapis, uh, everything is, you know, amethyst. Oh. Everything is pure, you know, because those those materials hold that higher vibration. So everything that is that is built there is, uh, is of that essence, of that vibration. So when you experience it, it looks like a giant bed of gold, a giant bed of rose quartz, and it's just a, a reflection of what in the grounded uh, form, you know, our rose quartz and amethyst and gold, you know, they hold those higher energies. So when it comes to building a crystalline city, you're using materials, not physical density, but you're using uh, those same materials because they reflect that, that consciousness, that level of consciousness. And they're elaborate, beautiful, the giant open plazas, mm. mountains. It's really uh, over the top. It's beautiful, really beautiful. But I found myself, as the, as the vision, as my access started to, to wear off, I was, you know, starting to climb on top of things to get a better look. And <laughs> uh, really, I was, I was going for it. <laughs> I was like, what's over here? Whose house is that? <laughs> so I, uh, I have been had been running around in the crystalline city. Um, but now, now that I've, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, through some levels of initiation, um, I, I don't have to, uh, feel like an, an outsider that's been given a day pass <laughs> or something like that. So I get to experience, uh, and a lot of times I've, I've given permission to my team to take me wherever I need to be for whatever I need at that moment. And I'll be taken into like a mastery retreat. Mm. Where it's it's very gold, a lot of gold, and again very elaborate, but it's it's very um, there's there's so much light, so much of this crystalline light frequency that uh, you you start to understand as you're exposed to more and more of that where it is we're going. You know, it's um, I I consider New Earth. You know, when I take a look at at um, that higher dimensional expression of Gaia. She does, it, it is, you know, everything we do in this density has a higher expression. It's just expressed with more grandeur, more light, more love. So when we're, even when we're working, you know, many light servers drawn to, uh, you know, let's draw this pattern on the ground or plant these crystals in a certain way it, on the ground or, or, you know, do this to this water. It, you don't even realize that you're linking the higher and lower expression. So you draw a vesica Pisces in the sand and you're putting crystals in the middle and opening it up as a, as a gateway or a portal. When you take a look at it with your fifth dimensional perspective, you can see the giant beams of light, the, the way that it's connecting higher and lower, and you're actually creating those things in the higher realms. So this is constantly bridging the world and lifting this so that you have your, your own light signature is being anchored in that higher expression so that you're merging with your higher self. It's absolutely fascinating. Beautiful work, Sandra Walter. Thank you so much. We, I have another question about zero point. You said we were, we are in that zero point time. Can you talk more on that? Sure. And this is, this is something that is, is difficult to wrap the mind level around. But, let us, let's consider, forgiving all the past as we did, let's consider in this now moment, you're presented with the information. Third and fourth, density, fourth dimension is actually gone, technically gone. 
just being recreated. It's like a shadow of the reality that's playing out, and we're just going to play it out until it's not supported anymore, anchoring in the fifth dimension, and then we go into the fifth dimension. Well, the 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 time space experience, the experience of linear time, technically is is well, it's gone from the fifth dimensional expression altogether, but it's wearing itself out because it is it's just a creation like everything else. But zero point is the is the absolute, the absolute stillness of source. It is that pure source energy that is in complete neutrality, love, light, divine will consistently. There's not a, a forethought or an afterthought. It's now, now, now. And it is the experience of density that brings about uh, experiences for source to to absorb source you know with this whole experience is based on source saying let me know more of myself and we as individual fractals of that source constantly let me know more let me explore what is it like to be this what is it like to be that what is it like to be a star a planet a galaxy a universe what is it like to be a human incarnated in the densest form possible, a third dimensional, a fourth dimensional form. What is it like? And what is it like? And this is something that you want to share with Source. In that zero point stillness, Source is absorbing all of this experience. And as we tap into zero point, we share our experience with Source. And you can consciously, because you are experiencing density and uh, and a time-space continuum, you can share that back to source, and it always goes up, you know, through all all the layers, uh, all the way out to source. Share it with source. Source, witness this. Feel this. In this now moment, feel what it is like to be incarnated as a human, awakening during the shifting consciousness, experiencing ascension. Feel what it is like to experience being an ascension guide on a on a planet that is ascended, feel what it is like to be uh, having conversations with all of these divine teachers during the shift in consciousness. You know, share that experience, Lauren. This is this is everything goes back to source, and when we're conscious of it, it assists in connecting us back to source and that zero point stillness where. There is nothing else but just you and the heart of Source. And then out from there is where we get the experience of the mirror effect or duality, triality, or separation of any kind. There are levels of separation all the way back to Source. But when we tap into zero point, and zero point energetics are something that every everything out of third and fourth dimension experiences. They experience zero point all the time where they understand whatever I put out will come back. And now that we're moving out of this density and duality, we start realizing the boomerang effect is getting much more intense. And for you know anybody who's going to put out hate, throws it right back. Put out emotion, throws it right back. And you realize that you are the creating that experience. And, you know, in old paradigm for lessons, for mission, for you know, unfolding of the soul's purpose. But once you get into the ascension timeline and you've dissolved all of those lessons, you've done the soul release, releasing the soul to bigger and more unified journeys rather than micromanaging the experience of duality, as that drops away, then you get to move into zero point and you get to realize everything, all of my consciousness is creating what is around me. Yes, we have collective agreement that I, for the most part, cannot get away from. However, how am I going to impact? How am I going to feed my own creative consciousness into the collective? And that's how you use zero point, not just to connect with source. And I highly recommend sharing, you know, this this is how you witness your own journey, your own beingness. As we move into unity consciousness, it can feel like I'm losing myself. I'm losing everything that I was. This is how you you share everything back to source. Good, bad, ugly. It doesn't matter. You know, this is something source. 
feel this, witness this. This is where I am. And it's not asking or or asking for, for anything. It's not prayer. It's not even meditation. You know, but prayer is, is the asking, meditation is receiving. It's the, that neutrality, that zero point of just witness this right here in this now moment, this experience. Thank you. Always good to end up with a thank you, no matter what's going on. Thank you. I am, you know, I'm crazy right now. I feel full of love right now. Whatever it is you're feeling, share it with Source. And the 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 pure Source consciousness responds. You'll feel it. You'll feel that stillness awakening within you, that pure zero point. And that is miraculous. Share that, Source. It is miraculous that I can feel you at all in the middle of this crazy experience. Thank you. Anything, no matter where you are at your journey, take those moments throughout throughout the day to to do the, the forgiveness, to expand your consciousness out. There's quite a few exercises in the Ascension course how to expand out into pure source beingness because we do want to expand our energy fields and expand our consciousness so that we can receive but in that in that zero point, you'll feel that absolute peace, mm-hmm. that absolute knowing, and that assists us in dissolving the density, the duality, the illusion. Really incredible times that we are witnessing, that we came here to be involved in. So inspiring and wonderful today. Sandra, Walter, thank you again for being here. For those who are ready and want to really embrace this great ascension process that we're able to be here witnessing and participating in, you've got a great course. It's an online intensive, and it's designed to accelerate the process at all levels of awakening. Can you share a little bit about that? There's over 30 hours of videos and mp3 meditations yeah and it continues to grow i continue to to update it and add to it as as we all go through this ascension process more and more becomes available but what i wanted to create my intention for the course was a step-by-step guidance for anyone consciously choosing to participate in ascension i do not feel that ascension is something that it gets bestowed upon everybody at some magic point and we all pop into a different reality. I don't resonate with that at all. I feel that it is a, a deep experience of discovering who you are, who you are not, what's happening. It, I made it very uh, appealing to the mind level uh, to, to ease people into, okay, here's a review of everything that has occurred and why this is occurring right now, then getting into the, the body vehicle the body as a separate consciousness, it's not even you, and all the realizations that come with uh, honoring uh, the body, emotional clearing, a huge part of the process, getting over all your karmic contracts and lessons, taking command of your lower levels of mind, ego, and emotion aren't even you, and it feels like it, and like I, I believe it is, and it, it truly isn't. So it is this expansion of consciousness and moving out of all the, the, the programming or the beliefs, the habits, the um, old teachings that we may have picked up along our many journeys here, and then moving right into light intelligence of unconditional love. What is it? What is the cosmic Christ? How do I activate my higher senses? How do I get into crystalline consciousness? How do I use sacred magnetics to, to assist that? How do I create my own timelines? We're all jumping timelines all day long. How do I create timelines that serve what I desire? How do I find what I truly desire? How do I work with these energies? How do I connect with my star brethren? Star family becoming a huge part of our journey now. How do I discover my mission? True service, what is that? My soul's purpose, how do I follow it? And then I do get into... DNA and, and gateways and cosmic triggers and what those are about. And then the, the final step of the Ascension Course is exploring uh, transcendence, 
which is merging completely with that I am presence, the higher self, through a, an embodiment of the solar cosmic Christed state, which is what my work is is focused on. And then how do we move into the first waves of ascension, which start occurring in 2015? This is, this is something that's going to be available. How do I move into that? And for a lot of people, it's discovering truly what you desire and how to, how to get out of the push and pull of the illusion. For me, the Ascension Course is about freedom. It's very difficult to teach self-empowerment. I can give you all the, all the tools and all the guidance, but it is something that people have to engage with. Mm-hmm. So I created a course for people who want to participate and engage with their own evolution. Evolution happens regardless. You know, you can ha- it'll push you around, or mm-hmm. you can you can be conscious in the moment and and realize what's occurring, and then engage with the process and go, okay, what do I want to experience? Mm-hmm. There's no judgment on whether or not you want to experience uh, embodiment of a Christed state, or you just to feel better. <laughs> you just want to be free. How do I get things to stop making me so emotional? You know, depending on what your goal is. The, the intent of the Ascension Course is freedom so that you feel your free will returning. We always have free will, but it, it takes away all of the barriers that, that have been, all the blocks that we have in our own consciousness that we have created ourselves that keep us from exploring the higher states of consciousness that are available. For those who want the embodiment of a Christed state. That sounds wonderful. Sandra, you mentioned 2015 is the first waves of ascension. Can you explain more on that? Yeah, this is something that, um, now that information came through to me in 2012 when I was first recording the ascension course. And then as we get closer to that marker, that was put out there. It was like end of 2015. Mm-hmm. I noticed that more um, more uh, channels are starting to, and I don't call myself a channel. I'm just a, a conduit for information. Mm-hmm. But the um, I noticed that more channelers have been starting to uh, to talk about that, which is which is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and many of them Pleiadian, <laughs> which gives you know big thumbs up to the team. But it's, uh, it's an opportunity, just like any gateway, for uh, those who have fully participated, stayed with it, did not lose faith, cleansing the body vehicle, cleansing the consciousness, cleansing the thoughts, clearing away all the lower levels, engaging and merging with the higher self, consciously commanding it. You know, the masters te- taught us commands. And and the command is not merely repeating words, but it's knowing your own power and saying, this is so. And as we work through all of these these, uh, preparations, we know that there's a point in, in the illusion of time, there's a point in this journey where opportunity, and it's like a perfect storm of ascension, perfect energies, perfect galactic alignment, perfect alignment of the self, all the realizations come together, all the personal journey, all the old stuff is over completely. And then there's, there's a, a turning point. There is a, a big shift in the consciousness of, a, 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 I say it is a huge amount of the population able to finally embody that frequency of the fifth dimensional consciousness and it, at this point, it is anybody's guess as to whether that means uh, people resonating in a third or fourth dimensional state of consciousness can, can perceive us. If this is where the, the whole idea of, you know, and then you disappear, and then you go light body and disappear. Um, I, yeah, invisibility. I've even heard some stories of people being on the beach in Hawaii doing a ceremony, and um, a group of tourists came along, and they didn't even see this... Event. Oh, consistently. I had someone walk through my legs in Sedona. I'm sitting there meditating, and someone just walked right through my lap. I'm like, how is that even possible? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But it's it's just, you know, and again, that lack of density, illusion, and everything. Mm. But this will be the first time that we'll be able to hold that consistently. 
and holding that, it, it, it just all of the past, all of the lower vibration dissolves completely. And that fifth dimension is completely anchored in your beingness, which means definitely a, a, a difference in, in density in the body. Um, and, and we don't know, will it be the same as when Yeshua was walking around glowing? People can see him glow, mm. sparkling, or we have completely different frequencies on the planet and a completely different platform than 2,000 years ago when Yeshua took that journey. Yeah. So now we already have a higher vibrational planet, so this is probably where all the predictions come from that we're going to disappear, all those people are leaving kind of thing. I really don't feel, and this has been a strong part of my journey, when, when I've been frustrated with even talking with the masters and saying, I, you know, personally, I don't want it to be like the experience that we have had uh, in, in the past yeah. connecting with masters. And sometimes you can hear them, sometimes you can't, sometimes you don't know if they're listening. I can't see you, I can't hear you, I can't feel you, that kind of thing. I don't want it to be that way between the first waves of, of ascension, this embodiment, and the, the folks that are, that are left in a lower density, not left, but choosing to be in a lower density. I'm, I truly hope in my heart that it is not the same as what we have with the masters now, but it is what it is. There's, you know, there's a level of mastery where you simply don't engage with lower dimensional thought form. You can't. It's just, it feels awful. You know, some, some people's consciousness feels like you're walking into a, a car chase, <laughs> you know, just crazy. And then in your mastery, you hold the higher light. So a lot of that density doesn't even make sense anymore. It looks like madness. So there, there may be no interaction. We're not sure. But that gets revealed to us the closer that we get to that marker. For now, we just need to, to be in this now moment and welcoming all that we have available. There's so much available right now. It's beautiful. And I don't want anyone to get stuck in the waiting game or let's see what happens. And if they ascend, then I'll participate. It doesn't work that way. This is conscious choice mm -hmm. all the way through this shift, all the way through this evolution. And this is the first time in, this, in the history of this planet that we've had the opportunity to experience jump time, this, you know, the the gap in the fossil records that occurred in the past when we went through this area of space, when these cycles uh, uh, came around, rather, this is the first time that we've been conscious of it. So all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're swimming in the ocean and then we're walking on the beach with new legs, and here we are, standing on the new legs, learning how to use them. But it is conscious participation. It does take that bold venture into the unknown. And you can't do it wrong if you come from love. Mm, you can't do it wrong. Oh, love. You can't do it wrong if your intention is to experience more love and your true self. You can't do it wrong. You know, I think that's what a lot of people felt before 2012. They were just kind of waiting around. It was that waiting game. But now we clearly realize no one's going to do it for us. It happens within us. Yes. And I feel that was brilliant. I feel it was brilliant that at the end of 2012 there wasn't some earth shattering whatever to signal what had actually occurred because it, it sent everyone into a state of introspection what did I believe yes. what did I know? Mm -hmm. you know what did I feel and and what was imposed upon me that kind of ascension via inception mm -hmm. thing did I just believe something what do I really know so for some people they backed out of it altogether went back to sleep yeah. for, for others they went whole hog into the new yeah. that I need to participate. I need to, to know what these people are experiencing because I feel like I'm, I missed ascension. You know, there's a whole group of people that ascended on the 12-12-12 on the to the 12-21. Not in the physical, but in the etheric realm yeah. leveled up. So mm -hmm. now as we reunite with that, it's an incredible process, but it does take choice. You know, you have your free will to do whatever you like, but the conscious choice to participate in ascension, I promise you, will not do you wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a divine act. It is a divine service to all that is and to your own journey. Beautiful. Very inspiring. Yes, and personally, I expected a giant love fest on 12-21-12, 
and I was in <laughs> Peru, and that didn't happen. I woke up on the island of the sun with a splitting headache at 15,000 <sighs> feet. The helicopters of the powers that be were still flying around, <laughs> and we were literally going to, driving in Bolivia that day, my girlfriend and I, we were bawling. We were crying. We were depressed. I came home, and I laid on my bed, and I cried. And now, just this past year, in the first six months, there has been a kick, the literal <laughs> kick in the pants. And maybe it's the galactic team. I'm just hearing so loudly, game on. Don't be afraid of the change. Um, yeah. I've released a lot of self-beliefs uh, that really have been holding me back. Mm -hmm. So game on for everyone. Self-revelation. Yeah. This is, I mean, we talk about revelation. This is it. <laughs> Things that you're about to experience, and you're never going to find it. You're never going to be able to Google your self-empowerment. You're not going to be able to <laughs> Google your own revelation. This is something you don't search for in the external. You have a lot of guidance and a lot of reflection, but the work internally, learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Learn how to, to look within. Uh, a lot of people are like, I don't know, I looked within and I just I have no contact, I have no connection or whatever. This is, there is plenty of guidance available to get you to that point, but the decision to make it your, this is your own ultimatum, I am going to reveal all that I am to myself with the help of Source, my higher self, and my divine team, and I'm going to keep inviting it in and get closer and closer and closer until we are experiencing what, what we're experiencing now, contact. Finally, this is a beautiful to me, the, the reunion of, of our beingness, humanity, with the galactic family is priceless to me. Mm. It is, and it's not, it's not any of these first contact scenarios or, or light ships or anything. Mm -hmm. This is not about land and fix everything for us. It's never going to be about that. It is going to be a co-creation, and in order to communicate with our beloved star families, you have to be at a resonation to understand their consciousness as much as they don't understand our consciousness we don't understand theirs. So there is this all this liaison work going on, going, and I'm constantly sharing in these contact experiences, you know, they're asking, what do you see? What are you experiencing? Because they're learning where our perception is at, or you, even your, just your personal perception. I see you as a giant magenta being with a head and no, no arms, you know, and just like, explaining to them what what I'm experiencing, and I'm like, okay, well, show me, you know, my, my higher self will do hand symbols, you know, or show, during gateway work or, or now all the time as to, you know, what's going on, look over here, hold your hands like this, that kind of thing. And now my galactic team has started to do that because they understand that I understand m messages from my higher self uh, in that way. So there's... Mm going on, but you get to create that yourself mm. if you expand, uh, you know, out of, the, out of the fear, because they, they don't look the same, um, out of the fear of, of something being in your reality that you were not aware of. That can make people very paranoid, mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're there all the time now. Mm. Uh, you know, there's all these, like, little levels of fears and triggers and the emotion that comes with it. It's an overwhelming amount of love when they start to, to work on you. And now that we can see it, you know, eyes open, when you see a giant field of light, you know, going through your body, uh, you have to be okay with that. I feel that a lot of the, the reason why, I, why I'm able to interact this way is because I'm calm, I'm okay mm -hmm. with the unknown. I've done the, the challenges. I even had this beautiful revelation moment uh, back in 2012. It was in the summer, my first summer here in Mount Shasta. I'm up on the mountain. Nobody's around. I'm in the middle of this big field. I had just had uh, first contact with the light ship like days earlier, so I'm underneath this starry sky. Anything could happen. There's bears. There's you know mountain lion. Who knows? I'm out in the middle of this all alone. Nobody's around. And all of a sudden, I feel it. Oh, my gosh. 
I have no fear. Uh. I'm not afraid of animals or light chips picking me up or being alone or being cold or being uh, up here in the wilderness on Mount Shasta with nobody around or whatever is crawling over in that bush. Just complete absence of fear. And, and the, the realization was I have not felt that for hundreds of thousands of years, mm -hmm. a, a complete absence of fear like that in one yeah. moment. It just, it was overwhelming. I just cried because I was like, oh my gosh, in this moment, I feel absolutely no fear. I'm wide open. Yeah. And then the, the joyous celebration, the energy that comes with that of, oh my gosh, I got there. Yeah. I got to this point. This is what we're working for. Yeah. The absence of fear. Mm -hmm. well, and there's always, you know, density will pull you in and out of levels of fear. Yeah. But you need to, you need to expand, you know, make the balloon a little bigger. Every time you blow it up, you know, expand a little bit further, a little bit further, expand that consciousness so that you start touching those higher realms of consciousness and you start remembering what you truly are and what you truly should feel like, oh. you know, who you truly are. So wonderful. Sandra, Walter, thank you so much for really being this authentic self and doing the work within yourself and being that gatekeeper and oh that's just so wonderful i loved your expression we are a fractal of source wonderful we just need to connect back when with, with that and we do it through our heart yeah and don't pull let it shine through you. That's the thing. Open up. You're a natural conduit of source. It's just eliminating everything that got in the way all this time. Uh, we have more healing conversations with you. This has been fascinating in our time today. Thank you for this wonderful information and this really awesome special offer for us today. Thank you, Sandra, for being here. You're so very welcome. Thank you so much for all the service that you're providing. Many blessings, sister. Any last comments? I do want to always allow you to kind of put the cart before the horse there, but any last comments as we wrap up today? Everyone, feel how present divine love is within your own beingness. It's not about just being in the now, being in the now. It is about letting that presence shine through you. Welcome forth your higher beingness. Welcome forth pure source consciousness. That is, is the solution to all of our worries, is that divine love, the divine light, and the divine will. Just be it. Let it shine through. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you, too, for listening. We invite you to share this program with your friends and get this information out to the world. This is information you won't find in the mainstream media. We now leave you with music from the universe, literally created by the universe as mathematical equations were assigned to musical notes. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Also, we invite you to take part in our online healing retreats, which feature spiritual teachers with powerful tools that will transform your life. Visit AcousticHealth.com and click on Online Healing Retreats. Namaste.